Right, here we are again. Um, <coughs> International Full Throat Timeline, live hangout number 16, consent issues. Uh, I've moved the time forward to 6 p.m., hoping to capture some more um, viewers. I think I have to try moving it back. <laughs> um, so there's one person viewing me, I think. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's just well, somebody was thumbs up anyway. So, uh, but I'll put this on. Uh, I'll put this on the Intent Archive eventually. One well, in the next few days, and, and, and when well, when I've edited, oh, we'll stop yawning. When I've edited it down, I will put it on uh, first my YouTube account, and then um, well, the Intent Archive next month, probably yeah, next month. Okay, uh, a few points. Um, I say it's consent issues, but uh, there's some news. The latest news is Julian Assange has been arrested. Uh, the, he's been holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for seven years. Um, having, having said that, I don't think prison will be any worse for him. At least he'll get an hour's exercise every day. Uh, maybe better maybe better food. Um, <coughs> um Assange was accused uh, in of two cases of rape in Sweden, as you may recall. That was the pretext used for arresting him. Um, I don't think I don't really think there was anything conspiratorial about that. Uh, he has this um, sort of scarlet pimpernel-like figure, uh, sort of handsome, charismatic. Uh, blonde as well, it doesn't do bad even for men, and he was sort of, the sort of man women are attracted to. Uh, <clears throat> uh, he moved from, he, he, he bedded two women in quick succession, I think um, probably one was jealous of the other, and, and, but um, I, I don't, I, I don't I, I, the whole thing is, is ludicrous. Uh, in another case that's likely to be back in the news soon, well, he's actually been in the news, is a woman named Sally Challen. Um, <clears throat> this was not originally a false rape case, but it appears to be melding into one. Um, Challen murdered her husband. Um, she was, they were divorcing. She was hoping to get back together. And she was in his house one day. She moved out. She took a hammer in a handbag and battered him, battered him to death. <clears throat> um, she was convicted of murder, given a 22-year tariff, uh, life sentence, a mandatory life sentence, a 22-year tariff, which was reduced to 18 years of appeal. That was in 2011. And incredibly... Uh, the case is uh, the case went back to the court of appeal, and, and the, the appeal has been allowed, and she's out on bail, pleading guilty to manslaughter. Now, as, um, <clears throat> things you should know about this: the woman behind this appeal is a corrupt lawyer named Harriet Wistrick. She is lover of um, the lesbian lover of Julie Bindle, who is a dedicated. They're both man haters. They're both man haters. Wistrick handled. Um, she 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 represented David De Freitas, who was the father of Eleanor De Freitas, who committed suicide. Uh, Eleanor De Freitas falsely accused Alexander Economo of, of drugging and raping her, um, <clears throat> being a man of some substance and not to be trifled with. He, he brought a private prosecution against her. Uh, you know, he did his own investigation, in fact, and showed that she was lying about, uh, you know, you, after she was meant to have been drugged and raped, she went shopping with him. Um, she was charged with um, making a false rape allegation, uh, but um, uh, committed suicide three days before she was due to stand trial. Wistrick represented David DeFratis, who is either lying or fooling himself when he says that uh, um, he was astounded that uh, the CPS would put continue with the charge um <clears throat> she's she's represented sally sally challen they've 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 found a new mental disorder called um, <laughs> dependent personality disorder 
uh, and uh, this is meant to be the reason she, she murdered her husband. And in September last year, the Guardian published an article in which it claimed that uh, she told Wistrick when, when Wistrick was in a prison, so oh, he shouldn't be <coughs> should be sleeping. I've plenty of sleep, but um, I wouldn't go to bed till three thirty. But <coughs> I get my head down at about out for an hour or so in the afternoon. Um, anyway, <coughs> she told uh, she said to have told Wistrick that one one on one occasion her husband took her upstairs and anally raped her. Uh, and, and somehow this this is going to uh, it's probably a bit loud as new evidence. Well, it isn't new evidence; it's, it's manufactured evidence. Um, generally speaking, new evidence isn't allowed under uh, under, under the Criminal Appeal Act 1995 uh, be, because of this sort of thing. It's because people can keep concocting evidence. I mean, <clears throat> if they got plenty of resources or, or even just a corrupt lawyer in this case they can invent they can invent testimony and alibis and so on and generally speaking uh, new evidence will be allowed but some there are conditions attached to it you know, there's a video on my uh, youtube channel um the truth about convicted murderer sally challen uh you'll, you'll find it uh you probably see it who <clears throat> take a gander at that was well, it's, 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 it's really an oral uh, oral uh, video uh, audio audio <clears throat> so that's Sally Challen uh, uh, and today I found so uh, on um, on YouTube an American student or former student named Bailey Kowalski <laughs> a Sioux University claims she was raped by three uh, three um Basketball, three members of a basketball team. Uh, doesn't mention their race, but they're usually black. And somebody commented that it's uh, another case for failing to fit that black man. <coughs> uh, she claims to have gone back to the to a dormitory with them and then been gang raped. Well, no, yeah, and she did report it at the time, of course. Um, no, no sympathy for these these stupid tarts that was, was this is a case of I, I don't I don't, I don't believe, you know any 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 delayed report is is unworthy of uh, belief um without very strong cooperation um anyway I like that the issue of consent um I, I, I'm looking for the nightly question I, I, I did watch that um that Luther documentary um I, um, I watched it. Uh, wasn't a, oh yeah, yeah. I watched, it. I watched it on BBC, but I don't. I don't have a TV license anymore. I watched it. Uh, um, I, can't remember, I watched. I think watched it. Watched it in the library. Um, but I've been able to find then anywhere to download it. So it, it doesn't appear to be any at all. Is it on YouTube? If I can download it, I, I, well, I'll, I'll probably add it to the full soap time anyway. It's rather odious, rather, rather awful um, uh, documentary. Well, I mean, not, no, it's a good documentary by, by three, but it's a horrible subject. Um, consent issues. <clears throat> consent is, is a big thing. Uh, yeah. uh, and a lot of rape cases now, I mean, stranger rapes are straightforward, aren't they? A guy attacks man, a guy attacks woman, or, or man, uh, and she she fights back and uh, goes to the police. Immediately, almost immediately, uh, he's traced now by CCTV DNA and hopefully convicted. Um, great rape, so called, are mostly not like that. They're about women changing their mind afterwards. If you find that difficult to believe, if you're a newcomer to this to this timeline, um, <clears throat> take a look at take a look at the, the false rape timeline, um, and see if I can. Uh, Find this it's a pretty beautiful case. Um, um, Scotland. <clears throat> it's um I think it's a case from the nineteen nineties. Um what Carol Stevens. 
Um, oh yes, Ka <coughs> Caroline McKinley. Uh, I mentioned this I think, last time. Um, Caroline McKinley. <laughs> um, she, she was a teenager. Um, she, she had sex with a guy, and afterwards, <laughs> she said, "She said, she said, she said, I was happy enough until the sex was all over, but later I didn't want it to happen." This, this is, um, it, it, it's difficult to to credit, but this is this is actually what happens in the vast majority of these so-called date rape cases. Women withdraw their consent afterwards, and they rewrite the experience as rape. Um, <clears throat> A lot of a lot of these cases, probably the majority of them involve alcohol. Either or both people consume alcohol, and uh, check out the check out the timeline on um, the three Ds, um, which are um, the three Ds, which are um, drink, drugs, delay. And I've just got to check this if things actually. That you could hear me, uh, so um, other people would hear me. So um, let's just go to this this live uh, stream on my other browser. Can you hear me? It's live. Uh, yes, stream yes. On my other browser. Yes, you can. You can hear me. <clears throat> um, so um, consent is a is a trick a tricky area now. Consent is by no, you hear what it is, no means no, yes means yes. Uh, well, no, no, not always. Um, check out the Holly Dunn song. When I say no, I mean maybe or maybe I mean yes. No doesn't always mean no. Um, by the same token, yes doesn't always mean yes. And we're not talking here just about sexual about sexual matters. Um, <clears throat> you, know, you ask your boss, can I have a raise? Yeah, see me at the end of the week, and at the end of the week, it's see me next week, manana, in other words. Um, so, consent, consent, I mean, it, it, <coughs> is, is it a case of no means no, yes means yes, or no means maybe whatever? It, 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 it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. Check out the, the, the entry for the dance of ambiguity, which is um, on the timeline somewhere. Um, I'll have more to say about the nightly question, but I can find it. <coughs> now, consent is, again, it's, it isn't an easy matter. Not just sexual consent, but other matters. Um, for example, a motorist pulls up a driver, says to him, bring it to this bag, please, sir. And what happens if he doesn't? Well, if he doesn't, he's, he's committing a criminal offence. You know, So... Consent doesn't come into it, <laughs> um, but it can get more complicated than that. You know, your boss consents to pay you if you go to work. Yeah, um, the cinema consents to let you in if you pay pay for a ticket. That's nonsense like that, but it, it, it can get complicated. Um, now, give a, a, a look at examples. You clearly not consent. I found this in a file queue. It was originally closed until 2022. Um, <coughs> I can find the. Um, here we are. I'll to expand this a bit. Um, not expand it to um, to um, to uh, enlarge it. Now, this was um, in in, um, in in occupied Germany. Uh, this is the 9th of May, uh, 1945. Frau Gatka was with her 14 year old daughter. They were, they were sleeping in a school at Wismar. Um, a British to soldier with a torch, a pistol, woke her up, tried to drag her away. Um, when she resisted, he turned to the daughter um, with the obvious implication that. Um, uh, so she did what? So she could have screamed, but he might have shot her in those circumstances. Um, or she might have thought he'd shoot her. Any, anyway, he led her away, and they had sex, rape. Clear, a clear case of rape. Um, now, 
no, no, no issue, no issue of consent there. She went with him voluntarily because he had a gun, and the info. I mean, no, 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 no problem with that. But most cases are not that um, clear cut, are they? Um, <clears throat> police officers will at times. Police officers should not have sex with women while they're on duty. Period. There was a case fairly recently of um, two police officers, now former police officers, in New York, arrested this young woman, teenager, junkie about. I think it was a junkie. And uh, she dropped her knickers and they let her go. And then later she cried rape. Um, they, I think they were charged with rape initially, but the case was dropped when it turned out she'd lied through her teeth. Now, was she raped? Uh, no. Um, but after the Holtzclaw case, um, now this is this is this will show you just how much feminists care about these things um, about women in general. After the Holtzclaw case, I, I, I started a petition uh, to, to that police officers on duty should, it should be a criminal offence for a police officer on duty to have sex with a woman. Period. Um, it was, I mean, I mean <clears throat> Hopsclaw denied everything, but I mean, so there have been cases of, of, of police officers who've thrown away their careers by having sex with women, and there have been police officers who rape women, not no, not necessarily forcibly. Uh, Abraham Joseph was one in Houston, Texas. Uh, he he was he would prey on illegal immigrants or um, undocumented workers, as they have to call them, and. Um, he would say to a woman, "Look, um, either you have sex with me, or uh, you're arrested and sent back to Mexico, or whatever." Worse that effect, and uh, he was convicted of four rapes and given a life sentence. Uh, now, I, I started a petition make, to make it illegal, and not, not one person signed it. Not one. Not one. Uh, and, and, although recently, um, recently, um, I think just in New York. They've um, uh, passed the law to effect to that effect. Um, <clears throat> now, with consent, uh, look, what what I think they they've started in been going for quite a long long time now is it's the power the so called power imbalance. That a woman who has sex with her boss, there's a power imbalance, therefore it's rape. <laughs> um, all sorts of nonsense like this. It was probably Catherine, Catherine McKinnon who started this. Uh, she's a, the most, probably the most influential and the most odious feminist who's ever lived, uh, and one of the most evil. And her, her, her writings are turgid. Uh, I mean, the way she twists everything. Um, um, the, the idea is basically a woman can't consent to sex and any time a woman decides she doesn't want to consent and any time a woman has sex and regrets it afterwards she was raped um <clears throat> now on the subject of date rape um th this woman is a feminist so-called camille palia i don't go as far as she does but this is on the timeline but listen to um what she says about date rape and it, it's so I don't I don't go as far as this but um, she, she's got some she's <laughs> Diana Davis of course the woody woodpecker of reason these are her thoughts on date rape almost everything you say and write causes outrage in fact it seems as if a lot of it is calculated to do so but maybe the single greatest furor is over your comments about date rape Want to elaborate? Well, my new book, the new collection, Sex, Art, and American Culture, contains the original date rape essay that started off this all. Most people have only seen scattered references to my, my theories. They've never seen the full, long essay, which begins, rape is an outrage that cannot be tolerated in civilized society. Rape is, of course, outrageous. What I oppose is this um, endless uh, scenario, hysteria over date rape, which I think is a quite a separate phenomenon that's coming from 
uh, a kind of white middle class feminism trying to gain control over men and portraying all of men as rapists and all of human history is nothing but a record of rape. It is, it is a, now today in certain campuses, you can be charged with rape merely for making making a vulgar comment about a woman's behind. I think that. Wait a minute. You can be charged with rape or sexual correct, harassment? Sexual harassment. Or it, but, but, but it is considered, it is defined as rape. Many radical feminists define uh, verbal, uh, sexual, you know, remarks as a form of rape. You, you, it, is, it is extremely bad. You cannot believe how bad it's gotten. Right? And wherever I go, this is the charge issue everywhere. It's now wildly out of control. So that people now, far from creating a better situation for rape victims, now it's so out of control that rape has become a joke. No one believes it now. Now, the, the minute you hear a date rape charge, it's sort of like, oh, right, and so on. And this is cutting down on the proper outrage that we should feel and the proper sympathy for authentic rape victims, which for me is usually stranger rape, right? or it's a case of, of, a, of a gross intrusion of sex into a non-sexual situation. I support sexual harassment guidelines, but I feel, again, even those are being carried out of control. I, I do not think that Anita Hill, for example, was a victim of sexual harassment. I reject her claim. That was, uh, <clears throat> that was not, I, I, I could blame the whole clip, but I used to get the gist. That was 1992. That was September 21st, 1992. As you said, you don't know how bad it is. It's got far worse since then. Um, uh, uh, oh yeah, I'll, pl I'll play a bit more. I'll play a bit, maybe, maybe not a whole lot, but I'll play a bit more. Let's come back to Anita Hill in, in just a second. We do want to get to that, but let's set up two possible scenarios. I can see someone saying, "All right, uh, a woman goes out with a man. They wind up in a sexual situation. The signals are ambiguous. He has reason to believe that she thinks it's okay." She later interprets it differently, maybe even differently than she felt at the time, mm -hmm. and places a different label on it. Mm -hmm. And these are no sorts of guidelines to run a railroad with. Right. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I don't think that to qualify as rape, somebody has to jump out of the bushes carrying a club. What if, what if we're out on a date, and, and you've consented to go out on a date with me, we have a conversation, we wind up back at my room. Just because we're in my room doesn't mean you've consented to anything that I can impose upon you. I, I disagree with this. I feel that, again, through my study of history, that unchaperoned dating is a relatively recent phenomenon, and it's largely confined to the industrialized democracies. I feel that every day is potentially a sexual encounter. What else is it, all right? If a woman is not interested in sex, she must signal that from the start. She should not be going to a man's room alone. She should not be getting into the, a car with a strange man. These people can be Ted Bundys, all right? I, look, we have to go back to the fact that it was my generation, the 60s generation, that broke all the rules. When I was in high school in the early 60s, we were protected as young women. We were expected to be virgins. Only tramps went to bed with the young guys, right? Now, in college, we're the ones who said to the, to the campuses, get out of our sex lives. We were, we were imprisoned in all women dorms. We had to be in 11 o'clock at night and sign in. We said, let us make our own mistakes. They said, it is dangerous. You will be raped. We said, the price of freedom is risking rape. Now, what's happened today is that young women have inherited the freedoms that my generation won, but they do not realize that with that freedom with a, come risks and responsibilities. Now, again, I'm saying sex is a dangerous and unstable, it's a combustible force. You cannot predict how someone is going to behave. A very rational person, you know, male or female, can suddenly behave irrationally if you push the wrong button, because right? all kinds of things come flowing out of you that are nonverbal, that are beneath the conscious realm. But Freud was thrown out of the feminist movement 20 years ago by Kate Millett, who declared him a sexist. So what I'm saying is that we're not even aware of things which can suddenly erupt up. Right? Things can, can I mean, gay men have known for centuries that, that the price of sex can be death. Gay men, since, in, since the time of ancient Rome, were going down to the docks, into the alleyways, and ending up beaten up and dead. Right? What is the sentimentality that the, that the, that the glorious phantom wing of feminism has created around the issue of sex? It's supposed to be completely, this, this uh, totally risk-free, cotton candy thing. Everything is wonderful. And the slightest thing that's disturbing or abusive is somehow, you know, it's always coming from men. Men, men are generating it. I am saying women are giving signals, nonverbal signals that they're not aware, aware of, okay? A girl goes to a fraternity party, dressed like Madonna, is drinking 11 tequilas, and goes up to a man's room. She is communicating below the level of language. I'm sorry, it does not good, do any good to say no always means no. Now I'm saying no. To go to a man's room is, in effect, to consent to sex. This is what I want to bring back, right? I'm pro-sex. I'm saying go with it. Go with a girl, okay? Go with it. Have the adventure, but stop whining when you wake up hungover the next day, and, and he doesn't call, he doesn't send flowers, and oh, and then the feminists come around and convince you you've been raped. 
<clears throat> I agree with that to a point. Um, I mean, the issue of consent, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you say, all you've got to say is, should we go to the bedroom or should we go to bed? If she says no, fair enough, you know. And of course, if she leaves you, it's something different. <laughs> so, but um, <clears throat> it's, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult, it's difficult to, to believe that um, women are, um, it, it's difficult to believe that women are, are, are actually not being raped and then and then coming and, and uh, the women are having consensual sex and then uh, claiming that afterwards they, they, they were raped because they rewrite the experience in their minds but this is actually what's happening um <clears throat> now there's, there's, i mean this, this is quite important um recently i wrote to um i, I was going to put this on the rape crisis um on the rape crisis um, video that I did on, on uh, the rape crisis network and why it should be shut down, but this is more important, um, this is more relevant. Um, rape crisis Surrey and Sussex has on its website information, if you can call it that, which is clearly um, wrong. Um, it says here, what does the law mean in practice? It means that if a man has ever penetrated you without you wanting him to, it is rape. No, it doesn't. Uh, and it goes down here. It means that consent is not freely given when forced or pressure or threats are used. Like, if you love me, you would. Well, I'm sorry, no. If you love me, you'll have sex, and she has sex, and then cries. Right? No, no. It's, I felt very I felt very strongly about this. I wrote to the Charity Commission and um, the, the Advertising and Standards Authority. Charity Commission fobbed me off. Um, the 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 Advertising Standards Authority said it's been the bailiwick. So I wrote to the Director of Public Prosecutions. Wrote snail mail. No response. And I wrote to the Attorney General. I certainly did contact the Attorney General by email. No response. That was, uh, I wrote to the DPP on the 30th of November last year. So, November. And, and I, the Attorney General, I wrote to him on February 1st. I'll just read the letter to the, uh, I'll probably put this on the website eventually. Um, letter to. Max Hill, the director of public prosecutions. We finally closed the letter while I said the charity commission daily, blah, blah, blah. Also, the mission of Surrey and Sussex Rape Crisis Centre. Rape right, Crisis. Well, I checked this page yesterday. Lies are still there. In fact, they're still there at this very moment. Um, clearly, what a man who penetrates a woman's vagina when she does not want him to is not committing rape, nor is one who threatens to leave his lover if she does not immediately open her legs to him. You know, it's confusing, willfully confusing desire with, with consent. You or I may laugh at such claims, but an ill-educated woman with an IQ of 85 who finds this page six months after reluctantly having sex with a man may take a different position. These claims by rape crisis are de facto legal advice and clearly bad legal advice. I ask you to compel them to alter this wording. Um, I'll, I'll publish the whole letter in due course, but uh, they were ignored. Uh, the letter was ignored by both the DPP and then by the Attorney General, which... I think it's outrageous. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm, who, who, who am I? But it's absolutely outrageous. Um, to show how bad it is, um, I got to, this is for, from the New York Times. Um, this is um, <clears throat> this is an article called Denmark's. I haven't put this on time. Yeah, I might do. It, might do. It. Denmark's pervasive rape culture is detailed in the report. Uh, this report by um, it's by Amnesty, and it's <laughs> Danish authorities must do more to live up to this positive image. Uh, and now this is uh, yeah, the usual rubbish about gender violence. Uh, um, this this is actually where is it? Um, yeah, oh yes, Amnesty. Uh, <laughs> This is this is absolutely amazing. It's amazing. 
the, the, the New York Times, the newspaper, a newspaper record will publish rubbish like this. Um, <clears throat> um, where's this one? Uh, oh, this is a uh, <clears throat> this is um, where is it? Experts say a growing area is the issue of consent, sexual assault, the possible years that police officers receive. As long as girls and women are told to be careful with how much they drink, what clothes they wear, and how they behave, said uh, Miss Nielsen from the Centre for Victims of Sexual Assault, Denmark. Demos, sexual assault. Demos is a long way to go. Well, shouldn't they be, <coughs> shouldn't women be given sensible advice? Um, I, I mean, it's absolutely, it's absolutely absurd that uh, if I can find this, um, is it, is it ten years or five years? It's, um, it was five, I five. I think it's five years. Uh, it's absolutely hilarious. This um, I must be figuring. Let's just try find it. Come. Where is it? I'm, I'm sure. It's, 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 I'll just find this. It's, it's an absolutely absurd quote. Um, um, but <clears throat> unfortunately, that can be a difficult and humiliating experience. Denmark's a pervasive rope course, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. Ida Rudd, 37. I, 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 Ida Rudd took a decade to realise that a friend of course that has sex with him against the will. And in fact, raped her. I mean, <laughs> no, no. If it takes you 10 years to, to realise you're raped, you weren't raped. If it takes you 10 minutes or even 10, it should take not even 10 seconds. It, it's absolutely absurd. <laughs> There's a widespread concept in Denmark. If you're not big to a pulp with scratches inside and outside, it's probably something you wanted. Well, if you unzip zip the guy's fly and get into bed with him, oh, it's just absolutely absurd. Um, I've got an actual case here. Cause I've, I, I, this is a, a, a good case. It's, I've actually spoken to this guy. Uh, Christian Newman, his name is. Uh, he was, uh, this was from 2003. I found him recently. And, um, He's um, he was uh, falsely accused. <coughs> Where is it? I'm put it on the website. Yes, but I will. Uh, the first report is uh, from the Express, June to, June nineteenth, two thousand three. A sexually frustrated dot com boss raped a friend's pal because he believed she would be the shag of the century. I caught her yesterday. <coughs> Christian Newman news to use his family's multi-million pound. Thames side home to carry out the attack and to drove off in his Ferrari, the court was told. <laughs> it's really shocking, isn't it? Um, that was in that was in that was June the twelfth, two thousand and two that happened. It was on, on trial a year later. Um, but uh, when the case uh, when when the case was um is another one, uh Christian Newman of Caversham near Reading denied attacking twenty six year old she slept at the house bank to Thames and said sex was by mutual consent. Uh, but, but Reading Crown Court uh, yesterday, the Crown Prosecution Service said it would not take its case further after cross examination revealed the elected victim, currently known for legal reasons, lied about a relationship with Mr. Newman. Yeah, <clears throat> um, what's it he says here? Uh, I knew I'd be clear of right. This here is, um, it was, 20, it was 27th in the Sunday Times reach list, so I'm uh, probably not actually. <laughs> um, Last night, Mr. Newman, a former maiden an early pupil, reputedly worth £12 billion. Um, it was a Reading Crown Court. Um, I would never punch somebody, let alone rape a girl. Uh, I was in so many times richly and worth £12 million. I don't mind a business, drive a Ferrari. What more do I need? Why, why do I need to rape somebody? <laughs> um, and he, he, said, he replies that it wouldn't have happened to um, if he were... An ordinary bloke. Well, yes, he would actually. It's <laughs> ordinary blokes all the time. I mean, got, he's, he, I mean, he ticks all the right boxes. This guy, handsome, young, charismatic, and, and most of all, modest. <laughs> uh, why would I do it? <clears throat> um, no, it's, it's. I mean, it's. It's a. I, I actually, I actually spoke to him. Um, 
Uh, and uh, he said the case should never come to court. And I, I tend to agree. But as long as you've got women being told they they were raped when uh, just when when they clearly haven't been raped, I find this this is another another, another, another amazing another amazing case. This uh, another case of regret sex. Um, Julie Gavin. <clears throat> this was 1999, but there were a lot more recent ones, believe me. She banged on the door of a police station in the Shells, Birmingham, and says to a police officer, can you help me? I've been raped. Um, and she said, she claimed she'd been dragged into a Volvo, she got off a bus, dragged into a Volvo, driven to a nearby road, where she was raped at knife point. Um, <clears throat> later, she returns to the police and says she flagged down a passing motorist for lift. <laughs> they consented to sex with two passengers in a vehicle. Um, then feeling dirt, feeling guilty and dirty for what she'd done, she concocted a rape story. You should feel dirty and, and uh, guilty and dirty. It should give them community service and all to pay five hundred pounds compensation. Um, as no one was arrested, I think that's probably fair. You know, if if you know if somebody's arrested. Um, let me rest it now. Um, if if nobody if nobody's arrested, then you know uh, probably not a good idea to to prosecute a woman who comes clean at once, yeah, um, or ne nearly at once. But um, th th there's so many cases like that. So many of them, um, women women having sex with strangers and sex with. <clears throat> With or without alcohol, you know, um, especially with when well, they've had a few drinks, they'll have a woman, a woman will have sex with, with a man she wouldn't normally give the time of day. Um, so I mean, this is you know, consent is very consent is very easy, you don't need lessons in consent, you know, nobody needs lessons in consent, uh, it's just common sense, really. Um, and um. What what is happening now is you've got these lunatic feminists and, and even police officers are being brainwashed by this rubbish. Um, anyway, so that's that's consent issues. Um, I would be prepared to um, prepared to expand on this. Um, it's only my notice is that I'm well. It looks like I'm sitting in the dark, but I'm not. There's, it's, 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 I think it's the way the, the, the camera is positioned. This isn't actually dark. Um, it's light outside. Um, ironically, when I've been doing this at 10 at night, it's been, instead of 6 o'clock, it's been lighter than this. But uh, you don't need to see my ugly mug. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, anyway, if any of you have, uh, I'll end the stream now. Any of you have any questions, um, feel free to uh, drop me a line. Please spread the word because so I've got I think it's 245 subscribers now. 245 ready today. Uh, yeah, two, uh, 245 subscribers on um, on uh, YouTube, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely being shadow banned. So um, anyway, that, that's consent issues. Probably do another false fake timeline in a couple of weeks. Any anyone has any questions? Um, Drop me a line and I'll do all I can to answer them. And uh, perhaps we can stop this attack on due process and this insanity. Okay, thank you for coming. All of you, both of you. <laughs>